Can you use that? No, this should be on. Okay. Hello? Okay. Yeah, Great. Yeah. Welcome back, everyone. That was a fantastic lunch. Hope you enjoyed that. Okay, so we're going to get going on our student panel. And uh, I think Karen is facilitating, so I'll, I'll turn it over to you. Thank you so much, Leva. Um, I'm very pleased um, and honored to have this amazing panel of students that have joined us from multiple universities. We have people from JIBC, Douglas College, BC Campus, and VCC. And they're here really to share with us their experiences in online courses. Since all of us are either developing, teaching, participating, or maybe thinking about doing online learning, we thought that the best way to get a sense of what works and what doesn't is asking the students that participate in those courses. So I'm going to ask with a very general question. What are the things that happen in your online courses that actually helped you learn? What happened or what are the things that were present in the environment that helped you learn? We have a mic here too. Hi, I'm Susan, and I'm a student at VCC with the PID program, and through Moodle, uh, it, it was much easier to learn through having a lot of the documents already set up um, in order of which way the course went. So uh, by me having access to the documents, being able to read, um, as well as at the same time being able to speak to the instructor of the program through Skype, um, that was beneficial because it's more of a face-to-face -face conversation than email. Um, that way you get to relate to the instructor as well and ask any questions that may come up. I'm Heidi. Um, what I found helpful uh, in the online course and what I think is critical and interesting because for, in a face-to-face -face class, um, your organization of the class is critical and to get people at ease and, and uh, engaged in the learning. And I found the same with online learning was um, how the course was set up and the, navigate, the little tutorials on Moodle and the tutorials on how to navigate around Moodle um, was critical in just getting us off on the right, um, off on the right foot and uh, comfortable in the learning environment. And some of us had more uh, te technological um, expertise than others, and I think that really sort of um, levels the playing field a little bit and gets everybody started in a positive manner. Uh, I'm Hilda, and I did online course through WebCity in SFU. And what I found uh, useful is because we can share resources with students, and also like when you have forums with your instructor and students uh, posting questions so we can see the question from other students that might be related to us and learn from others. I think that's, uh, that's what I found interesting. Um, so I'm Diana, an undergraduate student at Simon Fraser University. Um, I've taken a few online courses for languages such as uh, Japanese and some other courses for communications and I found it's a great like WebCT is a great place to put documents and have like a chat going on, but I find it's not that effective to really have that connection with either your TA or your professors, so there's not a lot of feedback or interaction between the two, and there are times when I just get lost within it, so I don't think it's the best way, or at least SFU using WebCT isn't the best tool for online learning. My name's Jamie. Um, I study, study at Douglas College and Thompson Rivers University. I'm taking courses in chemistry and psychology at Thompson Rivers right now. Um, and I guess nothing really stands out too, too much for me online courses, but we use uh, Blackboard at Thompson Rivers. And just like the forum discussions on there are really, really helpful to just kind of discuss and hammer out ideas with our students. But uh, the interactions with the professors aren't really there. It's usually through email. Um, and in my chemistry lab, the discussions with our lab tech is usually through web or is usually through blackboard so that's a little bit more helpful the lab tech uses it more than the prof professors do i'm steve and i'm uh, currently enrolled at the justice institute in uh, the emergency and security management diploma program where i'm i'm taking one class and that's business communications and uh one thing that i have 
I'm absolutely new to online learning, so this program is the first time that I've ever uh, been involved in any kind of um, online learning uh, delivery program. Um, but the one thing that I found uh, immediately helpful for this business communications course was the fact that we have a, a journal where we can, at the end of each module, um, put our own thoughts and how we're doing and how we think that we are. We basically do a self-assessment for that module to see how we're doing. And then we get very rapid feedback from our instructor, Gary Green, who um, will you know, either validate our concerns or give us uh, an idea of how we can do things better or just give us food for thought so we can improve for the next module. Hi there, my name is Manjeet and I'm also in the Provincial Instructor's Diploma Program at BCC and so I've done about four classes in that particular program and other online learning and I actually have found that Moodle has changed and, and been improved along the four courses and I found that my best experiences have been the instructors actually and their video clips, bringing their personality, adding the Skype piece into it so that you are almost forced to have interaction with uh, either peer partners or team members. I thought that was a really huge improvement and really added value to the overall learning. Hi, and I'm Kathy, and I have completed one of the online program courses at VCC, the e-teaching learning. So you're coming at it from two ways as a, as a learner, but also learning how to do it so you can teach online so kind of a little bit different but what I found with that program is the um, uh, the variety of students that you are interacting with um, between someone at Nate or Sate in Alberta um, Northern Lights College um, in Northern BC a group work is challenging I have to say that <laughs> really challenging hard enough in class but really challenging online but the um, expertise and the the, the that people bring to that type of online learning was um, was really good and interacting with people um, from different areas in the country actually. Thank you for jumping into my next question Kathy which is what are the things that happen in the online environment that make your learning more challenging and if you can give examples of what has happened to you that didn't work for you. The connections, uh, I think in the earlier session somebody talked about the loading of the Moodle sites. Originally that was very slow and a little bit challenging and frustrating, but actually that's improved and I've, I've sort of seen that over the process. That was, um, and, oh and one other thing, I'm a visual learner and early starter, so I preferred the sessions where the instructors released all week's information right up front because that's just my preferred learning style, not everybody's, but that helped me gauge um, uh, my time management, that sort of thing as well. Uh, one of the challenges I experienced very early on was the lack of um, immediate face-to-face -face contact with other peers. Um, as we mentioned before, that a lot of the uh, interaction that you have is online. Um, some people use Skype, some people um, talk on the forums or discuss matters on the forums. Um, I mean, there is a flexibility to, to work in your groups and arrange different method, methods of communication um, as they seem, see fit. But it's one thing to be online in your own little space and, and go through the material and learn on your own, um, not to have that person that you could turn right over to and, and discuss uh, you know, a point of concern or even raising your hand and having an instructor uh, you know, um, answer your questions immediately. So for me, that, I, I lost a little bit there. Uh, okay, I think this challenge was probably not for me too much, but I know that it's out there and it's definitely something as instructors will encounter and that's having the motivation uh, to do an online course to get uh, items submitted on time if it's not a paced course. Um, but what I've thought about is, uh, and what I do for myself is I make a little mini calendar. Um, so I think for those courses that are not paced and you pretty much have maybe three to six months or a year to complete, um, it may be help for, helpful for instructors to um, have a mock calendar for that term or, or for that course with deadlines um, just to help other people that may not be great at planning the course to, you know, finish certain uh, pieces, assignments for that time so they can aim uh, and that will give um, more of deadlines for them to, to meet. Um, as I said before, group work was a challenge, so I'll let other people talk about group work. <laughs> 
online courses, as I found, I took the online course, I took that option because it gave me, um, my time is very limited. So you work all day, you work sometimes weekends, you, evenings you're doing other things. And so the option of online was I could get in there and do it on my time. What I found the challenge of that is, is I, I know the, the community that, that someone else was missing with online. I didn't miss it as much, but when it came up and I had to do it, I found it difficult because I was taking the online course for me in my time. And so a challenge is, is to make yourself be part of a community, because you are a community of learning, and to, to buy into that um, with an online course. So that's what I found a little bit difficult, given the time, and that's why I took it. But then I had to challenge and be part of something, which was good. I was also new to the online um, learning environment, and my challenge w initially was getting used to the sheer volume of information that um, comes out in an online course. And um, for instance, depending on how many people are in your class, uh, a forum discussion can be massive. And so if you're trying to read all the, um, the posts on a forum, uh, you really have to get used to how to do that without reading every single post because you, you just can't. And I think in a face-to-face -face classroom, sometimes just the little cl quips that you get from around the classroom in an online course turn into long posts, right? So um, that was my challenge. And, and you do get used to it, but um, that is something that I found difficult. Uh, I think apart from the motivation of uh, how much you go to the online learning, also there is not much uh, resource on how to use the certain uh, platform, let's say WebCity. In SFU, we use mostly forums and maybe sharing resources, but there is like chat or a lot of features that we never really told, told about. And I think uh, if there is like a resource, how to actually use it, and maybe the instructor can um, motivate the student to use it, it would be better. Well, I think the course grading outline for the course that you're taking really impacts the community on whatever platform you use. So for example, for my Japanese class, there wasn't any grading criteria for participation. So no one in the course participated. They didn't even uh, go on the forum. They didn't even say much of anything. So it's just you do your assignments, hand them in, and do some recordings of your voice. And hopefully the pronunciation is right. And I felt very intimidated by that because it seemed so lonely because the, the forum is just empty. No one's saying anything. You could probably hear crickets. Um, and I was even intimidated to ask any questions, because even if I had a simple question, like, like I was working at the time too, and I didn't really want to you know, go out of my way. And just posting like, a simple question was just really intimidating, because it made me feel kind of stupid. Um, so I think that can definitely be improved as well. I think just apart from like uh, the motivation it was being one huge challenge with my online courses, um, another one was probably retention. Like there's just so much knowledge that you have to try and cram into your brain. And for me, I'm a very visual learner. So sitting in a lecture hall like helps reinforce what I've learned in the textbook. And then taking notes is also just another way to reinforce all the information. And like especially for my first year psychology course, I found there's just there's so much being thrown at you, and it's such like a broad course in itself. And I'm not a psych, I'm not an art student, I'm a science student. So even in, in itself, it's like just a lot of information. And so one of the tools that I actually used and I found really useful is going on iTunes U. And I found a first year psychology lecture out of the University of Pennsylvania. And it was just really, really helpful. It covered all the same material that it's covered in BC. And it just really, really helped reinforce everything that I'm expected to know. We have our, I'm going to open the mic to the audience. And we have our first question from Brian. Is there any sense that online courses tend to be more work than face-to-face -face courses? Because I'm picking up at the gentleman at the end there where he said, not having access to those questions, so did you hear that or did you understand that? So when you have a cohort model, sometimes people with the single pipeline of being online connected, you don't get the same communication, so that translates into, well, I better do this and do this more and do more research and so on. Any sense of that? 
I find that they do tend to, I, I guess it could really go both ways. Like my psychology course isn't a whole lot of work and I, you know, I just sit down and read the textbook, listen to a couple of lectures and answer some questions. This is like four module assignments. It's not really that big. But my chemistry course, there's, there's quite a bit of work. There's like six assignments into it and you, know, you go ahead and you read stuff but then you're like, oh, I think I need to do a little bit of background searching on this and do a little bit of research on this. And, you know, these, these are questions that could easily be answered by an instructor, but when you're doing it on your own online, it's a lot more difficult in that way. Uh, for myself, I d haven't really seen that online courses are as difficult as um, in class. To me, it just seems easier because you just have to do that one assignment. And since people who usually take online courses are busy during like the day anyways, we kind of always wait to the last minute to get it done. You know, procrastination is kind of what the future is. <laughs> yeah, I think it's the same for me. It really depends on uh, your time management and if you do it uh, like in a frequent base, I think it's pretty much the same with uh, in class. I think there is a more work involved just in simply that uh, in a face-to-face -face environment, you do have that opportunity to talk with your fellow students more easily. Not that you can't do that online, but sometimes there is a tendency to be more alone in your learning. So I think you do have to do more individual research uh, rather than just getting together with, with groups. And uh, I think if, if an instructor can facilitate more communication between you see the workload. I think not in a class, not gauging what you can gauge in a classroom how everybody else is doing and what level they're working to. In online, I found, oh, how hard is everybody working? I don't know. Maybe they're working really hard. I work harder because I don't know how hard they're working. And, and then when I submit the first assignment, is it like everybody else's? You know, is it what level? How is she marking? And that, so you're kind of out there and you're going, oh, okay, I better do here because everybody else might be doing here. And then if I do here, then I won't look right. So it's just, it's hard because there's nobody around to gauge sort of where you should be, the level. Although you should do your best all the time. That's a teacher. <laughs> Agreed. <laughs> um, I think there is no right or, I'm, yes or no to your question, uh, specifically just because I think it's very individual. Yeah, you're looking at the learner and you're also looking at the course. Uh, so for example, I've done many online learnings myself through Thompson Rivers and through BCIT as well. Um, and so for myself, I know that I wasn't strong in math, <laughs> for example. So any of the courses that I needed to complete through my degree, like uh, my favorite cost accounting, I took that through BCIT in class, in person, because I, I needed to learn better that way. However, when I took, you know, organizational behavior or courses like that where I knew I was strong and able to um, read the information that was online, then it was easier. So it's, it's individual and it's how they learn. That's, that's what I think. And I'm going to have to agree with Susan, but I would say I don't think it's more work. I think it's different work. So it might have taken me longer to figure out, okay, where are all the readings that I need to? And I know I killed some trees, I have to say, that I might have printed originally. Not anymore. I've gotten better. But I might have uh, printed out a lot of the readings originally. Um, but I don't think it's, and that might have taken me longer to do. So I, I don't know that I would agree it's more work, it's just different work. And again, um, as Susan was saying, that it's really based on the individual and how you learn and what you're good at and what you might struggle with um, in the online learning environment. Uh, I think all those points, uh, at least elements, are very applicable to my own experience as well too. And, uh, and going back to being a first time um, my first experience with online delivery, I think for me it was also initially uh, a kind of a stress level of having to get in there and figure out what's going on. And generally I, I tend to be a little bit older than some of the other students that are involved in the program. And, uh, and so I may not be as savvy with the whole IT kind of thing. Like um, we, we did uh, online videos, introductory videos. I struggled with that. There had to have been about 30 takes before I could figure out, was this right? Why can't I see myself? Why is my lips moving and I can't hear sound, et cetera, this type of thing. So this was the kind of thing that I struggled with as well, too. Um, so if that answers your question. question. Any other questions from the audience? Yeah. 
Can we do one question and maybe we can direct it to a couple of students? Okay. I was just curious if any of you had the opportunity to use like a, a Luminate and what your experience was around using those kinds of platforms. Actually, uh, the company I work for, we use uh, Illuminate and Detango uh, for some of our learning, but I myself have not used that for online learning. Has anybody? No. I'm just going to ask maybe one last question. If you can say one thing that you think would be relevant for the people here that develop online courses or are planning on developing courses or are teaching an online course, one comment about if you only can do one thing, what should they be doing? Oh, I have a good one. Ask students, whatever you're developing, ask a student, please. Flip it around. That's good, okay. Uh, I would definitely say include uh, Skype in your course so that there is an online connection if it's not with the instructor and the student but at least with the students for each other if they need to do group work I would also suggest that just because it makes it more real and a connection is made. Just simple and easy to get on to navigate um, you don't want to have technology problems they want to get into the course and know what the expectations are. Don't have too many optional parts of the course because it's too easy just not to do them. And I think you lose out on some of the learning. I think knowing the expectation ahead is important. Um, just to go with, along with getting the student feedback, make sure you talk to the professors as well. Because even though if you have a great system, great for the students, students can use it. But if the professor can't use it, then they can't really communicate anything with the students, right? So make sure any like stakeholder that you have Make sure you just like cover them all so people know how to use it and it's easy to use. I'm just going to go with the whole Skype idea as well. I think just you know fostering that connection is very, very important with your students. I just want to thank our panel. And if you want to give them an applause. And we have a small token of our appreciation for them making it all the way here and joining us today. So thank you so much for coming. Okay, that's great. Again, thanks to all the students that came. That was so interesting to hear directly from um, people that use our courses. Okay, so thank you. Our next session, starting um, on the theme post-secondary and beyond. And so we'll just take a minute to get set up here, but ready to go?